questions 1 through 10 on the 2010 grade 8 AMC 8 at Euclid Middle School the mathematics teachers are Miss Germain Miss Newton and Mrs. Young there are 11 students in Miss Germain's class 8 students in Mr. Newton's class and 9 students in Mrs. Young's class taking the AMC 8 contest this year. How many mathematics students at Euclid Middle, Middle School are taking the contest? Well, you have 8 in uh, Mr. Newton's class, 11 in Ms. Germain's class, and 9 in Mrs. Young. So I guess just the total, which is 28. These are the total number of students that are taking the math contest, AMC 8, American Mathematics Competition eight for grade eight. So number one, the answer is C. If A star B is A times B plus A plus B for A B positive integers, then what is five star ten? Using the same definition, it would be five times ten over five plus ten, like that. And that of course is fifty over fifteen. If you divide top and bottom by 5, you get 10 over 3. So number 2, the answer is D. The graph shows the price of 5 gallons of gasoline during the first 10 months of the year. Well, by what percent is the highest price more than the lowest price? Well, the highest price is this guy right here, and that looks like it's 17. The lowest price is this one, and that one is 10. So we have to compare 17 to 10. So 17 minus 10 divided by 10, which is 7 over 10, and that is 70%. So 17 is 70% greater than 10. So number three, the answer is C. What is the sum of the mean, median, and mode of the numbers listed here? The first thing we need to do is arrange these from smallest to largest, and that will be as follows. And then I guess mean is the average, so add them all up and divide by, let's see here, eight numbers, right? So if you add these, this looks like 16 over eight, so that is two. M median, the next value, is of course the middle number, now in this case, we have eight, which is an even number, so there's no actual middle number. But there's two that are in the middle, so you have to take the average of those two. So two and three, the average, of course, is 2.5. So that's the median. And then the mode is the number that appears the most times, and that's three in this case. So now we have to add up these guys. And if we do, you get 7.5. So number four, the answer is C. Alice needs to replace a light bulb located 10 centimeters below the ceiling in her kitchen. The ceiling is 2.4 meters above the floor. Alice is 1.5 meters tall and can reach 46 centimeters above the top of her head. Standing on a stool, she can reach the light bulb. What is the height of the stool in centimeters? So we've got the floor and then we've got a ceiling somewhere and we've got a situation where top to bottom they're saying is 2.4 centimeters 2.4 meters that is and then the um, the light is uh, about uh, 10 centimeters right so this is not drawn to scale but approximately there and then Alice is tall enough She's pretty tall, 1.5, so she's about here. But then when she raises her hand, she can go a little bit farther up, another 46 centimeters, so approximately here, like that. Now what they have is a stool, and what that stool does is allows her to reach that light bulb. So the stool is really going to be closing that gap for her. So our job is to figure out that distance that the stool is. So this is going to be 0 0.1 in terms of meters. She's 1.5. The red line represents her hand, which is uh, 0 0.46. 
And then of course the stool, which I'll call S, is closing the gap to allow her to reach that light bulb. So 2.4 S will be equal to 2.4 minus 0.1 minus 0.46 minus 1.5. And this is, let's see here, uh, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.46 and that is 0 0.34 and that's in meters so that's 34 centimeters so number five the answer is B which of the following figures has the greatest number of lines of symmetry okay an equilateral triangle so here's an equilateral triangle a non-square rhombus non-square rhombus okay that's that and then we have a non-square rectangle there we go an isosceles trapezoid okay so isosceles trapezoid something like this where two sides will be the same so this side and this side are approximately the same yeah and then finally we've got our square now, what does lines of symmetry mean? What is that, this one right here? It means that if you draw a line uh, through the shape, you can see that one side will be identical to the other side. And another way uh, to think about it is that if you were to fold them, they would match. Okay, that, that's actually a little bit more helpful, I think. So for an equilateral triangle, you'll clearly see that there's three lines of symmetry like that, right? Those three lines. For a, a non-square rhombus, okay, I think there's the, just the diagonals. Because the key thing is that if you draw this line, you'll be able to fold the, the shape uh, on each other so that everything matches. And that's the key to it. For a rectangle, we've got, let's see here, just cutting it in half like this. For a trapezoid, I think just that. That's the only line of symmetry. For a square, we've got these guys, top and bottom and sideways. But then also the diagonals for a square would work like that. So let's count these now. For the triangle, it was three. For the non-square rhombus, it was two. For the non-square rectangle, two. Isosceles trapezoid, one. And for the square, there was four. So therefore, the greatest number is for the square. So number six, the answer is E. Using only pennies, nickels, and dimes, and quarters, what is the smallest number of coins Freddie would need so he could pay any amount of money using less than a dollar? All right. Well, let's concentrate on the first 25 cents. So from 1 to 25 cents, that can be achieved with just a few coins. And those two coins are if you have two dimes, one nickel, and four pennies, you'll be able to create any value from 1 to 25. And try it, and you'll see it'll work out. So that takes care of the first 25 cents. Now, once you go up to, say, 26 to 50, all you have to do is just add one quarter. Because any value in here, if you add a quarter, would give you something in this range right here. So for example, if you had 17 and you added a quarter, you'd go up to 42. And 17 obviously can be achieved with, uh, let's say, one dime, one nickel, two pennies, like that. And then similarly, if you want to go up to any value from 51 to 75, all you have to do is just add two quarters to any combination of these uh, coins right here. And then finally, to go from 76 all the way up to 99, you just need another quarter. So that's it. These guys plus three quarters is all you need, interestingly. And the number of coins, therefore, would be one, two, three, seven, ten. So number seven, the answer is ten, which is choice B.
As Emily is riding her bicycle along a long straight road, she spots Emerson stating, skating in the same direction, a half mile in front of her. After she passes him, she can see him in her rearview mirror until he is half a mile behind her. Emily rides at a constant rate of 12 miles per hour, and Emerson skates at a constant rate of 8 miles per hour. For how many minutes can Emily see Emerson? All right, so let's talk about this. So they are skating along some road, I guess, and initially... Emily, so I'll just call her girl because the names are so similar. Don't want to get confusing here. And then there's the boy, Emerson. And initially, there's a half mile between them. And then, of course, they keep uh, moving along. And eventually, there's a time where they both meet each other. So somewhere along here. I don't know exactly where, but let's say at this point, they will meet so they will both be at this point. And then, of course, they keep uh, moving along. And they eventually end up in a situation like this where the boy has gone a little bit further. But because the girl, girl is traveling faster, she's obviously ahead of him like that. And she can still see him. So I'll line these up. I'll sort of make these dots to kind of illustrate that this is the same road now from here to here is a half they told you that but for what but what is from there to there I don't know right so I'll go just call that X I don't know what is that distance and because of the symmetry of this uh, diagram this will also be X so the first thing we need to figure out is the formula which is going to be speed is equal to distance over time and any variation of this formula works also which is time is distance over speed now the time it takes the girl to go from here to here is the same amount of time it takes the boy to go from there to there so that means that time for the girl equals the time for the boy and in particular, I'm really referring to that journey from there to there. So, distance over time. For the girl, the distance is x plus a half. And over speed, and her speed is 12. For the boy, it's just x, and his speed is 8. So this is the formula we have to figure out. So 8x plus 4 is equal to 12x, and therefore 4 is equal to 4x, and therefore x is equal to 1. So that means this x is 1. Now we are interested in the time that it takes, um, the actual time, t, that it takes uh, the girl to go from there to there, and then, of course, to go from there to there, because during that entire journey, she can see the boy, and that's what they're interested in. For how many minutes can she see Emerson? I don't know why she's not able to see him before or after, um, but I guess that's irrelevant. Okay, so we have to figure out the time. Let's, I guess, figure out the whole time. That's going to be, this is a half, and this is x. So distance over speed. Distance looks like 2x plus 1, and her speed is 12. So x we just figured out was 1, so that's gonna, just going to be 2 plus 1 over 12. So that's 3 over 12, which is a quarter. And this is an hours. So how many minutes? Well, a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. So there you go. 15 minutes, number 8, the answer is D. Ryan got 80% of the problems correct on a 25-problem test, 90% of the 40-problem test, and 70% on a 10-problem test. What percent of all problems did Ryan answer correctly? So 0 0.8 times 25 questions is how many he got correct, and that's 20. On the next test, it's 0 0.9 times 40, and that's 36. And then 0 0.7 times 10 is 7. So this represents the total number of questions he got correct, and if you add those up, it's 63. So to get the overall percentage, you would divide 63 by the total number of questions on those three tests, which is 25 plus 40 plus 10, which is 75. And this percentage 
is 84%. So number nine, the answer is D. Six pepperoni circles will exactly fit across the diameter of a 12 inch pizza when placed as shown. If a total of 24 circles of pepperoni are placed on this pizza without overlap, what fraction of the pizza is covered by pepperoni? So the diameter of this entire, uh, I guess, pizza pie is 12 inches. So if I let D, small d, represent the diameter of the small pieces of pepperoni, 6D will be 12, right? Because they're, they're lined up all the way across like that. So that means D is equal to 2. And therefore R, which is the radius of each of those small pepperoni pieces, is 1. So what we have to do is figure out the fraction of the pizza covered by pepperoni. And there's 24 of them. And each pepperoni circle has an area of pi r squared. And we have to divide that by the area of the full pizza, which would be pi big r squared. Immediately I notice the pi's cancel. And then r, small r, is 1. And then big r is the radius of the big circle. Well, the big circle, which represents the pizza, has a diameter of 12. So big D is 12. And therefore, big R would be 6. So this becomes 6 squared. So now we have 24 over 36. And dividing top and bottom by 12, that is 2 over 3. So number 10, the answer is B.